Thanks a lot for staying with us on TVC Breakfast. The Independent National Electoral Commission says out of the 2.6 million registered voters in Edo State, more than 2.2 million voters, which represents about 85.57% um, have collected their PVCs. Political parties are now holding last-minute campaigns and rallies to get more persons to vote for their candidates. Some of the major contenders are APC's Monde Okwebolo, PDP's Aswe Godalo, as well as Olumide Akpata of the Labour Party. Although issues like violence and bribery have been raised, uh, the electoral body assures of a free and fair electoral process. Let's uh, bring in now to speak about the coming elections we have uh, with us uh, joining virtually, though, Osage Ize Iyamu of the All Progressives Congress, as well as um, the spokesperson of Aswe Godalu campaign organization, Olu Martins. Gentlemen, we thank you very that much for joining us. We thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, for joining us on the program this morning. All right, let's begin with uh, Mr. Martins. Uh, your party has, um, you know, during the course of um, this campaign also been uh, contending with what you call uh, partial um, security agents, especially from the police. You've also spoken about, um, you know, the the REC. Uh, that's the Resident Electoral Commissioner. With the day to the elections now, uh, are you confident, especially with uh, the level of security presence that you are seeing in Edo uh, right now? Okay, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to be able to discuss on these very germane issues. Um, the police has a responsibility to ensure that everybody who participates in this electoral process from indeed the umpire itself and then the political parties, irrespective of their firm beliefs and their proclivities on who they want to vote for, and then the voters, police, the security agencies, especially the police that is saddled because this is an election and it is primarily the responsibility of the police to ensure that it is protected. Well, substantially, we have seen some level of um, compliance and cooperation from the side of uh, the Nigerian police. It's not yet Uhuru um, because we must continue to monitor the process because, like they say, the price to pay for um, um, freedom is, you know, eternal... Um, Vigilance. So we're vigilant. We're we are vigilant. We're watching the situation. We're still having reports and instances of people who have been arrested at the wee hours of the night. And we have said it before now that this contestation is a contestation between political parties. It's not a contestation um, between um, one political party and security, you know, agents. We had declined to sign the peace accord on based on certain conditions. It looks like some of those conditions are being met. A couple of our members who had been unjustly arrested and kept in holding in Abuja, some of them, you know, have been released, were assured by the visit of the um, chief of defense staff to the governor, who is also leader of our party, where he made some very comforting statements. We would hope that the security agents um, in their stance to remain impartial in this election will continue to remain impartial because on our own side as a party, we're not asking for any favors from the security agents. We're just saying that the election should go free and fair, it should be one man, one vote, and people should be allowed um, to express their um, um, preferences for whoever they want to vote for in this election. Because, you know, we are prepared, the People's Democratic Party is prepared. We have engaged at all level, and our people are ready to demonstrate, you know, squarely that. I mean, they are willing to vote PDP again um, with, with, I mean, at the election on the 21st of September. So we have no fears. We just hope that security agents and indeed the Independent National Electoral Commission will create a level playing field so that the will of the people of Edo State will not be, you know, um, you know, subverted by the agents of destabilization who want to do everything possible to ensure that the will of the people of Edo State you know, is subverted on the 21st of um, um, September. But if all the stakeholders, especially the INEC and the security agents, do their bit, I mean, and the result comes out, I'm sure everybody will go out. And I heard your preamble, there will be less litigations because 
elections are not free and fair. They must be seen to be free and fair by everybody, including the agents, including the observers, including the political parties, and including the voters themselves. All right, so let's go to the APC chieftain. Well, there is a perception that uh, this election is to an extent a proxy election. How do you think this is really going to affect voters' choice if you actually agree with this? Well, I don't know what you mean by proxy election. <laughs> Our candidate, Senator Mondo Okbebolo, is a, a household name in the senatorial district. In Edo South and in Edo North, he has been campaigning, not through proxies. But it will interest you to note that uh, in PDP, for example, the governor who is not on the ballot made a statement to the effect that they will not sign the peace accord and to the shock of all those who came, including the former head of state, General Abdul Salam, they actually did not sign it. So if you are talking about PDP having a proxy candidate, well, you might be right, but I'm not there. But for us in the APC, our candidate has been all over the place. We are working around the clock to ensure that we win this election. And we are quite confident. It will interest you too to note that all these cries about uh, attempt to rig is coming from only one party. It's not just one party doing this election. It's not even two. We have 17 political parties and uh, a lot of the candidates are eminent uh, those citizens. So when one particular party begins to be the one to cry out, you will know that uh, something is wrong somewhere. Especially when you also look at the antecedents. We did the uh, local government elections not long ago, and uh, we knew what we saw. I wish somebody in PDP would be able to say, please, the same standard that was used in local government election, let that same standard be used in uh, the governorship election. You saw the election we conducted, it was very good, so please do the same thing. I challenge Governor Basaki, I challenge any of their spokesmen, I challenge their candidate to make that statement, that look, we have shown that we are advocates of uh, free and fair elections. You recall what we did. So please replicate the same thing. But well, they cannot say so. On the other hand, INEC has conducted elections in this state before. And PDP were in opposition. And they won the election. They did not carry INEC to court. You know? So election is not free and fair only when you win. Anybody who is contesting election must realize that there is a possibility that he might not lose. That he might lose, especially when you have not done well. The reality is that there's no way you can divorce this election from the performance of the outgoing governor. He has been there for eight years. So whether you believe it or not, a lot of the issues affect his performance. If he has done very well, then fine. His party can smile and say they will likely be re-elected into government. But if he has not done well, no matter who you bring, it's going to be very difficult. And everywhere we have gone, people have complained. People are disenchanted. People are unhappy. It's not enough to say Fedra, Fedra, Fedra. We elected people in a door to fix our state. And the excuse is about, oh, this road is not a uh, uh, state road. It's federal road. It's uh, lame, especially when you go down the whole place. So the whole place is, uh, is federal road. So it's, you know, something that the two people are very disenchanted with. And uh, we are very confident, you know, and we look forward to free and fair election. We believe sincerely that on Saturday, we will win the election massively. You can imagine the statement being made just now that election should not just be free and fair. It must be seen by all. That's, that, that, that's ridiculous. Election is either free and fair or it's not free and fair. To say that it's a personal choice where everybody must say, oh, okay, we'll not see it was free and fair will be ridiculous. That's taking democracy to a ridiculous level. Election is free and fair or it's not free and fair. All we want is free and fair. It's not necessarily what individuals with their biased considerations think, about those who have lost. Once the election is free and fair, we are good to go. You know, so we thank INEC, we thank all the agencies for what they have done. And I'm happy that those who were crying wolf have now seen the, the goodwill of uh, those who are conducting this whole process. You cannot commit criminal offenses and think because perhaps you are a party member 
or you were sponsored by those in government, you're untouchable. The law is the law. Even on election day, people can be arrested. You can't kill somebody on election day and say, oh, let's leave him alone because he's in uh, party A or party B. You know, and the people that were crying wolf now realize that there is a process. You applied for bail, you got the bail, and the people are out. So what was all this indictment to the extent that even the if a general police was being indicted? Ridiculous. But it's okay, there's no problem about it. We know that some people who always try to lay foundation for losing and going to court. We will wait for Saturday, and by the grace of God, we'll see the winner. All right, uh, still with uh, you, I, I, I would like to crave uh, the indulgence of Mr. Olu Martins now uh, to continue speaking with um, uh, Osage Izeyamu. Of course, both of you will have your fair share uh, to respond to all the questions uh, from our end. But still with Mr. Izeyamu, uh, tell us how well uh, the APC, your candidate, has been able to maximize this campaign window to articulate his um, agenda to take Edo to greater heights if elected. That's been an issue. Well, uh, thank you. Know, you. The other side has, uh, you, know, you know, been capitalizing on. That's been an issue. So um, kindly respond, respond to that concern. Well, I think that uh, we have used the campaign period very well. There's no local government or world that we have not visited or spoken to the people in such places. And I can tell you that in many of these places, the reception was overwhelming. Our people have suffered in the past eight years. In my local government, for example, the recurring uh, grievance there is the land that was taken from our people who are farmers and given to uh, people that we don't even know and who do not even have any history of farming. So that is a sub point. And uh, the only way they believe that their ancestral lands can be recovered is uh, if they support us. And if you go around every part of the states, you are going to find that recurring disenchantment with the state government. So we've had a very good uh, campaign, and we've also met different stakeholders. We have met those in the business community. We have met professionals. We have uh, met the different uh, ethnic groups that are resident in our state. You know, we had meetings with Arewa, with Igbo leaders, Yoruba people. So farmers, so we have spoken to a wide spectrum of people and we have uh, been able to demonstrate that our candidate has capacity. You know, uh, just like they try to do uh, with the president, using artificial intelligence to manipulate, uh, you know, what came out on, uh, on, uh, on TV and the internet. They've tried as much as possible to demonize our candidate, but I can tell you that it has failed woefully. Uh, our candidate has been able to campaign all over the state. Our candidate has demonstrated capacity. He's a very humble person, very simple person. But people can see the sincerity. They can see the goodwill. And unlike the other ones who are very tall in talking about what they will do, he has shown clearly what he has done. Even before he became a senator, look at what I have done. And among all of them, he's the only one that can say, I have been elected before. The rest of them, are just trying to enter into the process. He already has a history of acceptance by his people. His senatorial district, that more or less we have considered governorship to, unanimously elected him to go to the Senate. I say unanimously because after he even won, no attempt was made to challenge the outcome. So basically, we're talking about somebody who is very popular with his people. We're talking about somebody who has a track record of performance. And our party is solidly behind him. In the past, we had divisions here and there, but I can tell you that this time, we are fully united. There were all kinds of speculations before, oh, this person will not talk. But in fact, it was a ridiculous uh, release that he brought out, oh, Pastor Ezra Yamu has left the campaign. That's ridiculous. I'm fully, fully involved, and uh, I urge all the people to vote for Senator Monduk Bebolo, because I believe that he's the best person we have at this time. Somebody that will respect the do people, respect traditional institutions, somebody that truly wants to develop our state. We don't want people who want to rip our state. We don't want people who, when they had the opportunity, every little job they did for our state, they collected billions. These guys have defrauded our state. We're not going to leave our state in their hands. So I believe that we've done well, and uh, I'm very sure that the people know the issues and they will support our candidates.
Right, but there were some knocks still with you, Mr. Ezeyamu. There were some knocks on on the APC uh, on why on the fact that its uh, candidate didn't appear for the uh, recently conducted uh, debate. Well, uh, let me tell you the truth. Uh, the way some journalists went about it amounted to what I might call harassment. You know, there's no way in the Electoral Act. There is no directive by INEC that you must appear before a certain panel to be interviewed. There's no such thing. It's just a norm we try to do to be able to reach out to more people. And we've had that discussions at several levels. If you want a candidate to appear to you, you invite him. Or to go on air and invite him in a language that is very disparate. I don't, you know... I expect that you actually want it to come down there because whether you like it or not, that is not the only media, it's not the only channel through which you can articulate your views to the public. And I don't think there's any candidate that can tell me that he has honored all the invitations he got. A lot of times, these invitations are impromptu and they conflict with programs we've already set up. You cannot be meeting with your people in the local government, maybe in far away or two. You know one is, and then all of a sudden somebody tells you, oh, please, want to interview you in Benin. It's not possible. So you have to look at your priorities. But is the message going on? Yes, it is. I just saw a documentary where the APC governorship articulated his views. You know, he has spoken about his five-point agenda in many fora. So those who felt that they could just bully and harass him into doing their own uh, interview, <laughs> I think they failed. He doesn't have to do it. And this is not the first time in history, not in Nigeria and not in other climes. A candidate can decide on who he wants to interview him. If I make his insistence that you must be interviewed by this person, then fine. We know that that is the rules and we play by the rules. But these are issues that are optional. And so nobody should make too much noise about it. All right, let's go to Olu Martins. Uh, how in touch is your candidate with the people of Edo? Uh, because some persons have raised concerns as to the fact that Perhaps he doesn't really, you know, speak the Edo language. And to another concern that the party raised about uh, the deployment of uh, the resident electoral commissioner and also the police commissioner, uh, we see that uh, the police has deployed about 35,000 policemen. I mean, that should be enough. Do you still have any fears as regards the conduct of the election? Pastor Saga is there. Um, <laughs> has contested elections twice. First of all, as the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, and then as the candidate of the All Progressive Congress. And even in these elections that Senator Monde Opolo became candidate, he also contested. At least he also aspired. There's nobody who attended television interviews more than him. And that's because he considered as articulation a fundamental requirement, your ability to connect with your people intellectually, a fundamental requirement. So because we can't, we can't, we can't pick and choose. He attended all of the debates. He debated in the first instance with uh, Governor Baseki in 2016. In 2020, he also debated with, you know, um, you know, Governor Baseki. The critical thing is the fact that the APC is cutting his nose to spite his face without one thing, you know, to be, you know, excessive. Let us even remove debate about it. We have not seen the candidate of the All Progressive Congress attend one television interview, whether locally here, whether on radio here, whether even on TVC. Supposing you even see another radio, another television station was aggressive. There are a plethora of television stations where he had the opportunity to articulate his views, but they will not allow him articulate his views. Like you started in your interview, do you have considered him a proxy candidate? Because what we constantly see is that we see the hand of we see the hand of Esau, but we hear the voice, you know, of Jacob. In Mr. Lou Martins, right? It, it uh, appears that um, we're having in some. All of the instances where right. the candidate uh, of the APC. Apologies, Mr. Lou Martins. If you can <laughs> hear me, we lost your audio at a point. If you best. can just backtrack a few seconds, um, you know, if you can just begin uh, that point, this point. This I do not speak the language. Point. 
I do not speak the language. I am an Asian man. I do not speak the language. So, and I think it is Puria because when I was student union president of um, Bruce Ali University, I was the one that was declared wanted. What makes, what makes for a leader is the connectivity of empathy. Edo State is a plural state. Edo State is a heterogeneous state. The language that we use in Edo State to communicate with each other is not a local language of Benin or a local language of Afemai or a local language of Isan. English is what we use to communicate. And besides, is it somebody's fault, for instance? I grew up in Lagos. My parents found love in Lagos. I was born in Lagos. I grew up in Suruleri. My essay isn't still very smooth because it is not my responsibility where my, where my parents found love and where you know, I grew up from. So when people say that, oh, he can't speak the language, I think that people are, you know, um, are, being, um, are being clever by half. Unfortunately, too, is that the people who are pushing some of these advances have their children schooling outside the shores of this country. And many of their children cannot also speak the language. So when you bring some of these period discussions, whereas we say that elections are about a contestation of ideas, a contestation of ideas, and how do you tell what a man can do for other people? Is what the man has done at the microcosma level. Because we have argued before that we must have the best of people preside over the worst of people. So when you bring people who are intellectually barren, who are educational flatters who cannot articulate their views, and yet we don't have some of these people presiding, we don't engage some of these people when we want to set up our company. It shows how hypocritical we are. TVC, an organization, of course, has gone around to look for the best of hands so that they can present the best in their desire to run an, an organization like TVC. So when we want the best for our private organizations, and then we pander to mediocrity, when we want to preside over common patrimony, it shows that people are hypocritical. People are not being honest. Our candidate is a first-class material. His CV speaks for themselves, like they say in Latin. Okay, let's put Mr. Martins on hold. Uh, I, I hope you landed because we are really braving the odds of um, uh, network uh, connectivity. We're, we're really, I, ho I hope you finished that statement you were making. Let me quickly move on now uh, to Mr. Ize Yamo for, for yet more um, you know, answers. All right, so there is also the Labour Party, which performed um, well in um, the last um, elections. Uh, especially the presidential elections in Edo State, and that is also seen as a looming threat uh, for the APC's uh, chances this time around. Uh, what's your response to that? Well, the Labour candidate has run a, a good campaign. And, uh, we appreciate how well they have gone just like the other political parties. It's not actually just three parties. I think there are 17 political parties. And, uh, strictly speaking, I wish all of them well, because uh, I've lived with Edo all my life. And even though I've campaigned vigorously for APC and I want the APC to win, at the end of the day, what is most important is that we have a fair process and we have a mm. governor that will be able to do better than we have seen, especially in the past uh, eight years. I also want to say that we should stop this campaign that borders on just trying to defame character. Uh, you asked my good friend just now about his candidate, you know? And rather than talk about his candidate, he went on a long voyage about uh, the APC candidate, you know? For crying out loud, talk about your candidate. You are talking about his CV. But what has he done for Edo people? When we talk about language, we're just saying that language is a valid means of identification. When a man speaks Benin, it means that he's either a Benin person or he has lived among the Benins for years. A man who wants to be governor of Edo, can we see any evidence of your identification with our people? Okay. You can't speak our language. No problem about that. What have you done in the past with your very tall CV? What did you do for our people? I understand that you were chairman of a bank. What were you able to do, you know, with that position to help our people? I understand you were chairman of Nigerian bureaus. What were you able to do? I 
to the answer is a big no, nothing. There's nothing to show. But the man you disparage has, you know, long list of projects. He has done even before he became a senator. So the reality I've asked people, I said, okay, let us look at what they are talking about. Let us choose. Is he a talker that we want or a doer? And everywhere when they said he's not a talker that we want, we want a doer. You know, the man you are talking about is people have elected him as a senator. Olu Martins is my junior brother, a great guy, very articulate, an activist. You know, he at least can not say he cannot speak his at all. He might not speak it fluently. And he's a whole boy. He has always been here. Forget about his Lagos upbringing. He's always been here. And that is why they wanted to be a Marxist, because they desperately need local content. You know, because when they look at themselves, there's no relationship with the state you want to govern. You know, so Monday I was elected as member, I was a, as a senator from uh, that senatorial district. Is he a fluke? Did he rig himself? Were the people in Eastern land blind? They put him there. And in the Senate, in his first year, first term in office, they made him chairman of the Senate Committee on Public Procurement. For crying out loud, that is not a position you give to somebody who is an illiterate. You gave that position because you looked at him and you realized that this man has depth. Because he doesn't talk too much, does not change the fact. And because they don't know, he has a BSc in business administration for University of Abuja. We know all this. We know the companies that he has brought up from the scratch. So they can be saying all they want to say. But this young man has demonstrated capacity. He has demonstrated performance. In fact, we told him that since they are making so much noise, talk less. Talk less. But the important thing is that when you meet the people you need to really converse, you talk to them. It's not your enemies that will say you must talk. We have asked their candidate, what have you done for Edo people all this year? They are candidate is senior to me. But he cannot even say any engagement. He has done with Edo people. All he's saying is that, oh, please, when you elect me, I will do well. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. He was there during Oshomole's government. He was there during the Obasaki's government. What, what has he done for our people? And funny enough, talking about identification again, it will surprise you that this man who wants to be our governor has never voted in a do. That is ridiculous. Especially considering the fact that you have been involved in the government. You have been involved in the government. And we have evidence to show that you have benefited immensely from your involvement. And yet, you have never voted. The Bible is clear. When you have not sold, you cannot reap. A man who has never voted wants to be voted for. That is ridiculous. So we are very focused. We believe that we have worked hard enough to win. We congratulate the other political parties. Uh, Dr. Azaya Osifu, the former chairman of Umude, uh, is also contesting. We wish him well, Abga. There is a uh, Pastor Azene Azene, you know, a very accomplished uh, man of God is contesting. We wish him well. There are a couple of them. And there's a woman, very articulate, right. PROP, very articulate. You know, so we see all these people, and it's good. But at the end of the day, we cannot run away from the fact that one person will emerge winner. And if you look at it critically, if you look at the map of a do, if you look at the statistics, they know themselves that they will not win us. Mm. They will not. All right. They look at the map. We have two senators. We already have two senators. Solidly on ground. The place remaining is a do south. Edo South, even the senator from here, is not in PDP. PDP that is in government here for eight years. Ask them if they have one single senator out of the three. And here they think they can win. APC has two senators. Labor has one. So the reality is that the place that might even be a deciding factor, which is Edo South where I come from, the real opponent there is not PDP. The real opponent there is Labor. Because again, there's a track record that they did very well in these places before. PDP was overwhelmingly rejected. So when they are talking about winning, I'm asking myself, do they think that it's a local government election where they wrote the results? Are they going to right. win? You know, right. are they going to win? It's not possible. Okay, uh, Mr. Osage Izeyamo, let's um, pan now to your co-contributor at this time, Olu Martins. Uh, what has always been a regular feature of um, elections has been uh, the signing of the peace accord and uh, the APC, uh, the PDP, which produced the incumbent, 
um, outgoing governor, you know, declined in, in signing this, this vital document. And, um, you know, some said that, that was rather hasty, uh, putting it mildly, uh, you know, on for that decision of the PDP. What's the current status now that you have seen um, what's on ground and you say you are confident, uh, you know, to go ahead uh, with the election? Well, I cannot hear you very clearly. I'm speaking about but the peace say, accord. Instance, I'm speaking about the peace accord, which the PDP yes, didn't yes. sign, I, 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 citing I heard you. reasons. It's a bit faint, but I think I can make sense of what you have said. I think I can make sense of what you have said. Uh, our people are reviewing the issues that are on ground. But it is important to mention that I think it bothers on ethnic misanthropism to ask what people have done. I have said it in several places. When you say, what has somebody done for his people? Who are his people? They asked Jesus Christ, your mother and father are waiting for you. And they asked them, who are my mother and father? These are the kind of statements that divide us as a country. Because you are asking me that if I live my life in Lagos, for instance, or in Ibadan, and I see somebody who has a need in Ibadan, for instance, for scholarship, I should not give that person scholarship or I should not donate blood in Lagos. I should go to my hometown to donate blood because I want to be seen to connect with my people. And I always tell people that if you have to go and connect with your people because you want to contest the election, then your motive ab initio is questionable. You connect with humanity around your sphere of influence because even the Bible says, whatever you did to the least of my brethren, that you have done unto me. Again, when the APC talks about a do state, it would have been proper if my leader told us how a do state was under the leadership of Governor Adams, Aliu, or Shomo. I have argued before. Are we a better state now than we were under eight years of ACN APC? And the word is an affirmative yes. We may not be where we want to be, but we certainly are not where we used to be. Edo State has moved far away from that, um, from that state where there was struggling, where there was brigandry, where there was intolerance, where the governor was known to, you know, to bully everybody, and we have moved into a more decent environment. I am challenging the APC, including my leader, Pastor Sage Iziabu, to write a book on how Governor Baseki impoverished Edo State. Because I saw them going to sign the same, the same peace accord in Victor Uwaifo Creative Hub. That creative hub initially was a den of rodents. It was Governor Gordon of Basaki that built that place that they are all enjoying the facility for which they went to send, you know, the peace accord. Is it Uhuru yet? It is not yet Uhuru. And when you talk about, we saw in this state, power belongs to the people. The people who are in power are much more than those who, the people, the power in the people is much more than those who are in power. It is the people that determines who governs them. It is not individuals, no matter how super those individuals are. Because my leader has forgotten to add that in the House of Assembly, we have 14 members in the House of Assembly. In the House of Assembly, we have a majority. So whereas we are talking about the National Assembly, it may be proper to talk about the State House of Assembly where the balance of power is in favor of the People's Democratic Party. Truth of the matter is that career politicians will not like Godino Basaki because he doesn't use public funds to patronize them. There are a couple of people who have no known business who, who parade the coordinators of power and who survive on political patronage. That is their anger. And those mm. states is better off than it was mm. when the party of my leader, uh, Pastor Ese, is, is there, you know, is there. I will challenge him to look at one, one area that APC did better than Obaseki, that Obaseki abandoned. Obaseki pays salaries, you know, as at when do. Truth be told is that when we talk about performances, there is no governor in a those states that have been able to measure up with Governor Basaki, at least comparatively speaking, he has done far better than what Edo State used to look like when the party of my leader, Pastor Os Os Osage Iziamu, was in power. And he cannot controvert it because the mm -hmm. APC is pretending as if they were never in power. They were in power, and in the language of Fela Kuti, when they were in power, it was sorrow, tears, and blood. I will not 
go back to the days that even my own leader referred to people in public space and as lions and tigers. We can have lions and tigers. I mean, moreover, as a man of God, I didn't think that we're going to come to that place where we'll talk about the fact that there are lions and tigers in the APC. We will never go back there. Yeah? The people will continue to vote APC because it is, I mean, vote PDP because PDP is decent, PDP is focused, and PDP has provided for us somebody who's got the capacity and the sagacity to consolidate on what Governor Godwin of Baseki has done. We'll not go back to the heydays of darkness, of oppression of thuggery, of bigandry, of buffonery and chicanery. We will not go back All there. Right. We are considering the we are considering the peace accord, and in no distant time, the governor of the state and the leadership of the party has said they may need to go out to Abuja because it looks like 80% right. of the of condition uh, that we put, Olumatis. condition sink or not to we sign We run out of time. Of I'm afraid I may have and, to interrupt you know, we will probably uh, go your response and sign it. But for that. We'll go back to we run out of time, of Mr. Olu Martins. We thank, thank you very, very much uh, for speaking with us. Uh, apologies, though, but we are bound by uh, the time allotted to this segment. Thanks uh, to... Uh, Osage Izeyamu of the All Progressives Party, who also joined in this uh, interview. We thank uh, both of you and may the best man win come Saturday.